Um, I'm going to start with some poems uh, from the book which Spencer published. But don't give him too much credit for it, I didn't do that much. This is called In Public Places You Sit or Stand Quietly. By the way, I like this sitting thing, this is good. This is like making me much more comfortable than I normally would be. You try to not draw attention to yourself. You are considerate and polite in social situations. You hide certain opinions and express other ones. You want people to perceive you as agreeable. Anyone can enjoy your presence for a short period of time. You allow people to project appealing qualities onto you, and for this reason, they maintain relationships with you for a few weeks or months or maybe a year or two. You take drugs because they make you feel different. Benzodiazepines make you feel detached and affectionate, as if your opinions and desires exist independently of you. Amphetamines make you thinner, more sociable. You are equally compelled by experiences with extremely positive or extremely negative outcomes. Physically attractive people don't appeal to you. You feel compelled by people based on their ability to change things. Your perception of reality, the ways in which you assign connotation to memories. You are interested in people who, when thought of years from now, will cause you to recall certain specific crippling emotions. people who are dancing and touching each other. I am drinking vodka with ice and feeling incredibly fucked. I wonder if anyone feels more lonely now than they felt an hour ago when they were alone in their rooms looking at things on the internet. Talking out of obligation, I like that. Keep doing that. <laughs> This is called, I just need you to know exactly what I want without me having to say anything. <laughs> Do you remember that dream I had where my fingers touched your fingers and we came to understand that our hands were capable of expressing complex emotions as separate entities from our bodies? Could you just put your mouth on my mouth next time you talk? I have been trained through awkward conditioning to react negatively to romantic emotional stimulus. Now I feel comfort because your brain is encased in a skull a few miles away from here. I'm sorry. Saying words that have positive connotations will cause catastrophic weather patterns. I'm severely delusional and I have poor impulse control. It's fine though, I'm good. Now look at my face and tell me that my physical presence in the world has caused you to experience extreme disequilibrium. Are you able to confirm my existence in a strictly biological sense? Wait, no. Will you just hold out for one second? I have to hide under my bed for two years. I'm gonna read some tweets now. <laughs> I know it's a crowd pleaser, people like that. If the only thing that makes you feel happy are things that make you feel much worse in the long term and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> yeah, I like you guys. My favorite part of eating mango is the part where I end up naked and crying and covered in mango. <laughs> the sad thing is that babies just grow up to be people in high school. <laughs> Drop it like it's your last shred of dignity. Major in being extremely crazy with a minor and why do people still talk to me? Today I drink beer while sitting alone on the floor in the backseat of my car and there's no way to make this seem charming so I won't try. <laughs> Upper middle class white guy would be a pretty name for a girl. <laughs> Today I thought I had lost my phone while holding my phone and briefly tried to do something on my phone to locate my lost phone while very, very stoned. <laughs> Yes, my writing is a fucking cry for help. What the hell is wrong with everybody? <laughs> if you want to be my lover, you gotta seriously reevaluate your life choices. I'm amazed by my own ability to be extremely crazy for an extended period of time. Isn't like that one? <laughs> 
I'd rather tell people I'm a junkie and a prostitute than say I'm working on a novel. <laughs> we go together like an active social media presence and deep-seated emotional problems. I thought bunnies laid eggs for the first eight years of my life. It's true, by the way. Today I got an email informing me that my tiny shit-headed publisher told the buyer at a bookstore that he, quote, doesn't have any copies of my book. My publisher is a dick. Please, nobody has sex with my publisher tonight. No, I don't know how to parallel park my car. Who do you think I am, Albert fucking Einstein? Is that a massive inferiority complex masked by an unsustainable drug habit, or are you just happy to see me? A few months ago, I decided that I would stop having sex with people who call me Eeyore and Lil Homie, and I've become a lot happier since then. <laughs> a few months ago, the guy I lost my virginity to let me snort his cocaine at a party, then I told him I had a clove of garlic in my vagina and could taste the garlic in my mouth. <laughs> my basement. My milkshake makes all the boys wonder how I even stayed alive this long. Somewhere out in the ocean, dolphins are fucking each other's blowholes, and look at you, you're just sitting there. A good metaphor for my personality is unwanted pregnancy. My milkshake makes all the boys run screaming from my yard. Mostly, I just keep my mouth shut and hope that someone is confused enough to have sex with me. I have 14 Hot Pockets in my vagina right now. Pulitzer Prizes should be given to whoever can fit the most Hot Pockets in their vagina. I would be interested in an MFA program that teaches you how to forget about poetry entirely and learn to do something that's actually useful. When the going gets tough, the tough lower their standards. I'm the LeBron James of pissing myself in other people's cars. Okay, now I'm going to read a poem that Spencer wrote. Uh, it's called The Sad Cat Poem. Did you guys have heard of it? Um, for those of you who don't know, this poem was the peak of Spencer's career. Like, it doesn't get better after this. Uh, it reached over 10,000 notes on Tumblr from the first 24 hours, uh, and it was featured on the Huffington Post after it reached 300,000 notes. So he's more famous than any of you will ever be, basically. Uh, I'm going to begin by reading a quote from the Huffington Post article about the sad cat poem. Are those happy tears or sad tears streaming down our faces? It's hard to tell because we're laughing so hard. Spencer Madsen's sad cat poem is definitely the most insightful thing we've ever read about cats. That's it, that's a whole book. <laughs> okay, and now here's the poem. My cat is sad. No one else in his family is a cat. We are all human except for him. He is excluded from most things, and no one tells him why. He just wants to play and be loved. He looks at us with wonder and disappointment. He says, hello, I am a cat. What is my existence? What is that? Why it and not me? Please, can you look at me and love me too? Can I have some of your food, please? I'm sorry, I don't like mine so much. Do you want to play with my toys? This one is my favorite. Do you like me? Are we brothers? Why am I so small? Can you help me be happy? Where are you going? That's it, thank you.